Kaga Germany here. I am back. And this time I'm happy, very happy in fact, to bring you a review of this car, which is the car I will be driving for the next six months. Um, a 2014 Ford Fiesta Titanium EcoBoost. So the one with the award-winning one-liter EcoBoost um, turbo engine, three-cylinder. Um, this is the titanium version, as you can see. It's got, um, you know, lots of chrome stuff on the outside, going on and in the rear too. Um, optional 16-inch wheels. I went for them because, you know, the standard 15-inch ones were a bit small. And the titanium also gives you this really beautiful, I love the design of these lights, um, daytime running lights and the projector lens. This isn't actually HID, this is just a lens, gives you the illusion that the car has an HID. And obviously this being the new Fiesta, the facelift Fiesta, it's got this Aston Martin-esque trapezoidal um, grille in the front. And basically what Ford did, they didn't really copy Aston Martin. What they did is, you can see there are two parts in the front. You've got the large trapezoidal grille and the lower one. And what they did is they swapped it. On the older Fiesta, this small part was above the larger part. And what they did was swap it. I guess it's just a coincidence that the grille looks a bit Aston Martin-esque. But it gives the car a really athletic and cleaner design and overall gives Ford a stronger DNA, you know, so when you see the car in your rear view mirror, you can immediately identify it as a Ford. Um, apart from that, the exterior-wise, this is um, this color is called Indic Blue, I believe. It's metallic and an option as well. Um, I love blue color, so I went for this. Um, and that sums up the exterior, basically. It's also got the um, optional tinted out rear windows. Um, you know, gives the car a more substantial look and this being the facelift it also has updated rear lights um, it's still a light bulb it's not LED this main part though is changed on the older car it was just you know a section of light it didn't have any you know three-dimensional this is kind of three-dimensional it wraps around the old car didn't have that so it's very nice to see that Ford updated the car quite substantially for a facelift I mean especially the front it looks completely different to the old car but apart from that the side is exactly the same. It's got a one clear shoulder line and another lower line. Two lines, as I said in my design review, a car should be, a good car design should be able, you should be able to sketch with just two or three lines, ignoring the window line. And the window line too is, you know, it increases, it's very athletic, and overall the car just looks really, really nice. You will see many of um, what you, we call them pyramidic or pyramid-like shapes, so you know, it's shapes that are wider on the lower part, like this part in the rear. It gives the car a wider stance. You can see it in the front as well. Um, I mean, the grille, for instance, is probably the biggest element. So you see that it, it kind of widens out and this gives the car a wider stance. Um, also, you know, this very swooshing, very dynamic, very flow, flowing lines, you know, that increase, um, you know, that go up into the rear. It's all very consistent. You know, you can see this line wrapping around and kind of going over the fender, continuing into the side, it raises up in, into the rear. It gives the car a very, very athletic and sporty look. So it looks like the car is moving even when it's not. Kind of influenced by the wind, if you want to call it. Ford calls this, uh, Ford calls this kinetic design. And in my opinion, Ford does in fact do the best design or one of the best designs for ordinary cars, you know, ignoring Aston Martin and all that at the moment. And it all just looks very consistent, very elegant. It looks more expensive than it actually is. I mean, this car is not that expensive to buy. It's, I think, starting around 16,000 euros or something for the EcoBoost. Um, and also this grill, I really love this grill. You can see this three-dimensional work they put in here. The chrome as well, it looks really, really nice. Almost as good as the original Aston Martin thing, as Bad Mouth like to call it. So all in all, the design gets a a solid A- minus for me. There could be some improvements. I mean, the whole car looks a bit like it's on stilts, but the designers worked it around with, um, you can see this fender line going over the wheel arches that kind of moves the, um, the actual position slightly upwards, optically, so the car looks more, stands down. If you ignore this, you know, the, the space is kind of wide, so this kind of eliminates that. Very, very smart and nice um, work the designer did here. Desi designers, sorry, designers, not just one. Same in the rear. Very, very nice. 
This is the key for the vehicle. Um, it's a switchblade thing. You can get optional um, keyless entry too, but I didn't have that because I don't need it. It's, I think it's a useless option. And when you unlock it, the mirrors will unfold. So when you lock it, the car will automatically fold the mirrors. So that's pretty cool. So let's take a look inside, shall we? This one doesn't have the keyless entry, as I said. As you can see, I went for the two-tone interior. The standard color for this car is just black on black or gray. It just looks really nasty. I don't like it. It's very boring and looks frankly a bit cheap. And all in all, the interior of this car is very, very nice, especially for its class. I mean, it's, this is a subcompact car. Um, the dashboard is soft touch, soft palette, um, just like the VW Polo or any other car in this class. And what's new for the facelift is actually an armrest for the titanium trim and above. And a leather stitch arm brake with some metal trim around this, that's new. Also, the door handles are now chrome plated or something like that. I mean, it's painted plastic, but it looks like chrome. On the older cars, they just had, you know, either not non-painted, just like the um, trim color, or just painted plastic, like prop normal silver, not this chromish kind of look. Apart from that, everything feels really well built. Um, nothing jiggles, everything feels really nice, um, solid built together, doors as well, really solid. I mean, this is not soft touch, um, but this is kind of expected in this uh, class of cars. Um, you don't see any, you know, subcompact cars which have padded doors, apart from the Audi A1 maybe, or the Mini, but those, you know, are premium cars, not normal ones. So everything in this interior, apart from the dash and the steering wheel and, you know, the main touching points, um, the armrest, for instance, or the handbrake are not soft touch, they're hard plastics. But that's okay, it's a really nice graining. It doesn't feel cheap, it just, it's just hard. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Doors padded too for the arm, that's the titanium thing, and it also gives you this lovely, you know, chrome trim, as I said before. Um, it used to be just painted plastic, so, as I said, just, you know, silver, not chromish. This gives it a more upmarket feel. And what I don't like about the new facelift uh, models is this center stack, this kind of UFO um, HMI interface, or HMI, sorry, uh, radio unit, uh, used to be covered, so this trim used to be silver or grayish. Now they went for this piano black version. I'm not a fan of this because this catches fingerprints like crazy and dust, as you can see. I mean, this car's brand new and it's already got dust all over it. And I wipe it every time I get into the car, so that's not very nice. Um, but apart from that, the system is really good. The sound is really nice. It's DAB with um, with Ford Sync, so it reads your messages. It connects to your phone via Bluetooth, and you can stream music directly into the audio sy uh, system. It also has USB input right here, and an audio jack. I believe this is a smoking option. I don't smoke, but this was you know per default. I mean, this is a company car. And, you know, this option was already ticked. I didn't have any choice over this. And, of course, I went with the manual. Being an enthusiast, you can get this car or this engine with a six-speed power shift, dual-clutch transmission. I didn't go for it because that would just be very boring to drive. The transmission is very nice, very short throw, very crisp, very precise. And it has a really good feel. It's not too light or too heavy. The previous uh, pre-facelift car um, was felt like driving... It, it, Driving the previous car felt like driving a toy car because this gear lever was very, very, very loose. It felt like you were, I don't know, poking around in uh, called it cake dough, right? It doesn't, it didn't feel very, very responsive or just it felt a bit rubbery and not very high quality or it just felt a bit too, too light. Um, apart from that, the clutch also is very light and the engagement point is dead smack in the middle, just the right place and it feels really good as well. Brake feels also very nice. Um, steering feel, this is one big improvement over the last generation. The last generation was the first Fiesta to receive electric power steering. That was a bit too light. I mean, you could literally turn the wheel with one finger and it just felt unresponsive. And as I said, the car felt like a toy car to drive. This is much better. This is much heavier. It's um, just as heavy if you may, or if you've driven the Mondeo or Focus, it's just as heavy as that. It doesn't feel any, you know, lighter, I guess. So it's very nice that I did this. So the car, all in all, 
the controls are perfect. I mean, there's nothing I can say that's wrong about the controls. Everything's perfect, just the right weight, just the right amount of feedback. And this being the titanium model also has um, heated, a heated windscreen. This is a typical four thing, so during winter you don't have to scratch ice. Um, you just push a button and it will unfreeze your windscreen. Um, automatic dimming review mirror. Yep, that's me. And as I said, this two-tone interior. I really like the color and um, this cloth material too. It looks really nice with the white stitching, white contrast stitching. And there's the glove box as well. It's not really big, it's not damped, being a small car. Passenger airbag, yep. And titanium also gets automatic climate control, single zone though. And this being the EcoBoost also, it has um, an auto start-stop function. So when basically when you're at a traffic light and you put the car into neutral and let, let go of the clutch, disengage the clutch, the engine would shut off. And it's really, really well done. You don't even notice it. The engine is so quiet, it's so smooth. At idle, you don't even notice it. And once you um, engage the clutch again and put the car into gear, the engine will start immediately. There's no lag. There's pretty much no jitter at all and no sound. You pretty much don't notice the car starting up. And what's also new for the facelift is this small uh, passenger airbag notification light thing. Before it was just a piece of, uh, painted piece of plastic, it just you know, looked like they forgot or something here. But now that they've added this, it looks a bit more upmarket. Also the interior lighting color, it's, it's day now so I can't show you, but it's blue. It used to be red. Same with the display. Um, this audio system is the oh, mid, kind of mid-level audio system. It's not the most expensive one. You can get a Sony audio. I hate it because it's it's really messy and confusing to use. And also the screen isn't much bigger. It is in color, this one isn't. It has navigation, but I'm just not a big fan of it. And the sound is, isn't really improved either. So, yeah, it is kind of perfect for me. I mean, I have a portable navigation system and yeah, it's really nice. Apart from that, this car also has interior illumination. So at night, this part will be kind of in an orange or red reddish color. Really nice, really nice. And the same here to this will be illuminated. Very, very nice for a car of this class. It also give you a nice thump when you close them. Really solid feeling. And the back seat is also very nice. That's my back. Um, I put the seat all the way to the back so I, can, so I could show you the interior better. But legroom is actually pretty good. And, you know, same materials as the front, hard plastic, but also very nice grinding, very solid feeling. No, there's no, you know, kind of jittering or loose feeling to it. Same door handle, very nice, looks very upmarket. Electric windows, this is an option. Um, and yeah, that sums up the back, really. This is a subcompact car, so don't expect too much luxury in the back. Very solid sound, so nice dump. Very, very nice. Um, this Fiesta, however, comes with jump, uh, rear drum brakes, like any other subcompact car. Um, front disc brakes, the only Fiesta that gets um, rear disc brakes is the ST. I've driven it once and that thing is just a blast to drive. It's really fast, really responsive. Everything is really, really direct. And all in all, it's just a really, really nice car to drive. And I forgot to tell you, this car also has rear and front parking sensors, as you can see, um, which tell you the distance by beeping, um, the distance between the object you're approaching and your car. Very, very nice to have on a small car. I don't really need it. This was also a already, you know, specified option. I didn't pick it. Um, it's a small car. Visibility is okay. Um, but, you know, it was already specified, so trunk-wise. It's okay, um, but there's a quite a high load lip, rather high actually, and when the seats fold down, it's not level, so there's about a step this large, um, so not the best in class, I guess, but it's okay for me, I don't carry that many large items. Um, also a difference I noticed, on the previous pre-facelift Fiestas, this used to be metal, so what's now, you know, this part is now... Um, Added, you know, they've got fabric covering it. It used to be metal, so kind of what you see here. This it used to be this, right? Metal. Not a big deal, but it's nice to see for you know putting effort into the car and keeping the car more uh, or incre increasing the quality of the car over the years and not cheaping out like some other manufacturers. And since we're here, let's hear the sound of that one liter EcoBoost three cylinder, shall we? I love the engine of this sound. This sounds better than a four cylinder. At low revs, it's a bit rumbly, a bit unusual, a bit offbeat, but on, um, during high revs, it sounds like kind of half a straight six. 
or it, it sounds pretty much like a straight six. I mean, it fires 1.5 times per revolution, so at high revs, it does sound like a um, inline six or boxer six engine. Not that you could not uh, not like a V6 though, because V6 have two cylinder banks, so that's different. Here we go. Very smooth startup. All in all, it just sounds really, really cool. Um, it's turbocharged, obviously, so the sound is a bit muffled, but I still like it. It's got a rev limiter, as you can hear. And we'll take it on a test drive for you, so you can check that out, see how it goes. This is the one liter EcoBoost with 100 horsepower. There's a version with 125 horsepower and another one with 140 for the Fiesta Sport. So this is the lowest range, but it's still basically the same engine. Everything is software-wise, so they kind of fiddle with the software to give you a bit more power during high revs. But it still goes really nice. It goes from 0 to 60 in around 10 seconds or slightly less than 10 seconds, but it feels, it feels much faster because it has so much torque. Around 200 Newton meters on overboost. And when it's not on overboost, it's 170 Newton meters. So, this sums up the review of this 2014 Fiesta Titanium 1 liter EcoBoost with 100 horsepower, the European version of it. You don't see many videos of the European cars, you always uh, see, you know, Saab Kyle 04 or To the Red Line LLC, and those are based in the USA. I'm based in Germany, as you can see, D for as in Deutschland. So that's really nice. Uh, you don't see many cars. Um, car videos based in Europe. So I think I take the opportunity and show you the European side of the car industry. There are some subtle differences, spec-wise, um, etc. But all in all, most cars, you know, everyone is doing the globalization thing. Ford especially, you know, you see the Fiesta, the Focus, the Fusion slash Mondeo, sold worldwide, basically the same car. And there are still some regional differences. And I'll see what I can get my hands on um, to bring it in the future. For instance, for this car, you can't get those DRLs and the protector headlamps in the US. And in the US, um, you also can get the MIFO touch system, which you still can't get in Europe for some reason, not even in the Focus. So you can only get the Sony, uh, Sony stereo, which I don't like. Um, there's some differences, but it is coming to Europe soon, I think next year or something. Um, other differences, um, the rear bumper is slightly more outward in the US due to safety regulations, so it kind of goes here. Looks a bit weird in my taste. And the interior is a bit different. It's a bit thicker, so it has a, a bar going around down here, and the steering wheel steering wheel is larger and, to, in my opinion, less attractive. I think it's due to the airbag thing. You know, American cars have uh, need to have those huge airbags for idiots who don't wear seatbelts or something like that. And apart from that, the car is pretty much the same. I mean, you can even get the same wheels in the US and the Asian versions. And in Asia too, you can't get the DLLs. The DLLs, um, I really love those. They, they are integrated perfectly. I mean, the position is nice. You don't really notice them when they're off. And when they're on, it's not like point well, dots. Um, they're more like, it's more like a, a line. There are actually six LEDs in here. And the light is being, um, you know, dispersed, as you can see. So it looks more like a line. Let's see if I can get those on. Yep, there we go. As you can see, six LEDs, and when you view it from the front, it looks like a line. It doesn't look like six single dots, which I really like. Proportion-wise, too, the car's really nice. They sculpted the hood for the facelift. It didn't have those two bars, or the power dome, as we call it. Uh, it didn't have that before the facelift.
this is it. Kaga Germany here. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.